Oh, now when I say Faker and then I say analyzed by the Jizz, is there a better duo? No, there isn't. But legit, in today's video, guys, I'm super excited because Faker pulls off some of the sickest plays I've seen in any solo queue game, and he goes 15 1 and 15 with a 30 KDA, and his only death is at the end of this game dying to the enemy found. So if you also want to feel sorry for your opponents because you're just that much better than they are, make sure you stick around for these red hot plays and tips. Now, if you like these guides, like the video, and let's get into it. So Faker in this game is playing LeBlanc against an Elite 500 on Vladimir, and just to get it out of the way, Faker Stunger, this game is Tarzan. Another Korean pro player, but don't worry, he rarely comes mid to help Faker, and he actually dies early on in this game, so it's all Faker, okay? Now, the first trick that Faker does in this game is not skilling an ability. This is really important, because if Faker didn't skill his Q here, he would definitely miss this minion. So skill that first spell, guys, when you need to win the laning phase, because you never know what might happen. Now, it's very important that when Faker does this, he's on cooldown. Look in the bottom left for me. So trading with Vladimir means he's just trading with auto attacks. This is not going to end well, so Faker is going to relax, and when his Q comes back up, he runs up, auto attacks, and Q's Elite 500. Now, you might argue, well, why doesn't he auto attack him again to proc his electrocute, but Vladimir probably has his Q back up, and he would take a little bit too much damage from these minions, so just a little trade and back off to de-aggro the creeps, and this is a nice little win. And then when he has his Q back up, same thing. He's going to move towards Vladimir, and when Vlad goes for the CS, he's going to Q him. These mini trades are essential. You never want your opponent to get CS for free, especially when you have your abilities ready to be used. Now, when Faker hits level 2, and you can see in the bottom left, he has both his Q and W at the ready, he is going to stand pretty much where this minion wave collision is. This means that for Elite 500, it's actually very risky to run up and contest the minion wave and even trade with Faker, just because he's standing in such an advanced position, and he also has the minion advantage. So when Faker Qs and Ws Elite 500 and goes back, it's impossible for Vlad to actually trade. Now, this trade is obviously a win for Faker, but we don't want to give up this advantage, so when we're on cooldown again, we're just going to move back almost in line with our range minions, so Vladimir cannot retaliate and damage us for free. Now, same thing, our Q and W are back off cooldown together, so we're going to synergize these abilities, and when Vladimir moves up, bang, same thing. Also throw an auto attack in there, and we prop that electrocute. Now, for Vladimir specifically, we have to be a little bit careful when he turns red, because his Q will do a lot of damage, and he will also heal for a lot, so we don't want to trade with Vladimir when he has this up. But when he doesn't have this up, you can see how Faker's positioning all of a sudden changes, running straight towards the Vladimir, and hits him with his chain. Now, same thing again with Faker's positioning. He has his cooldowns ready. Look in the bottom left. So he's going to stand at that minion wave collision point, pretty much on top of the melee minions. And when Vladimir moves up, again, it's chip damage. But Vladimir actually gives away where his jungler is here, and Faker picks up on this, which is what the best mid laners in the world can always do. Because Elite 500 all of a sudden starts running towards Faker as if he wants to trade with him, which makes sense because Faker is kind of on cooldown, but he hasn't really done this before in the lane, and he's playing really aggressively for no apparent reason. This is a telltale sign that the enemy jungler is looking to gank you, so do what Faker does and just back up. Now, once 10 or so seconds transpire, you can tell that Vladimir is not playing anywhere near as aggressively, and it's just back to normal procedure. Now, we don't want to cop that red Q, so Faker backs up, and when Elite 500 uses his red Q, this is when Faker looks to trade, and he does just that. So the mid lane, guys, it's really about knowing when to trade, how to trade, and also knowing when not to trade. Now, in this situation, guys, what's funny, in about 30 seconds time, Tarzan, the Olaf, is going to die. And really, it actually starts with what Faker is doing here. He knows that he wants to back because he doesn't have that much mana to contest the Vladimir, so he wants to shove this wave in and then recall. But the issue is that Vladimir can actually hold this wave up, and Faker did not shove it quick enough. This means that Faker has a decision to make. You either recall and TP back onto the wave and then shove it out, at which point you will have items, and it should be easy to do because you'll be full mana, and Vladimir is staying in the lane with only his starting items. Or what you can do is stay, but you have to make sure to shove the wave here. So Faker focusing his chain onto Vladimir is a complete... He needs to shove this wave in, otherwise Elite 500 can hold it here, and bad things are going to happen. Now, he does eventually shove the wave in, but this could have happened five seconds ago. And if that was the case, Olaf and Faker, both of them would escape this situation and Tarzan ends up dying. And again, it just stems back to Faker not doing one of those two things, committing to the shove or just recalling and TPing back. Now, Faker, because the lane is still in such a bad position, has to TP back to the lane. This is really important to do in your games as well. If the wave is ever frozen outside the enemy's tower, TP back and shove the wave ASAP. Now, when the wave resets, you can see Vladimir has his red Q, so Faker is going to run back. But when he doesn't, 
Faker runs forward and gets in a very nice little combo and chunks Elite 500. But you can see, guys, with these minions as well, Faker, just to guarantee he has the push, will sometimes auto-attack these minions instead of last hitting them, and this just makes the lane easier to play, and you're going to see this for like the next four or five levels. Faker is never going to be pushed in by Vladimir, so always having this push in the minion advantage makes the lane so much easier to play. It also makes you harder to gag, simply because you should always have the bigger minion wave, but sometimes, despite having this advantage, we do have to play a little passive, and one of these situations is when the enemy mid laner has another champion nearby. So you can see Pike is in the mid lane here, so Faker definitely wants to deny this cannon minion from Vladimir, but because Pike is here, he can't really do anything, so just backs up. But when Pike leads the lane, Faker is back on that minion wave collision, but when Vladimir runs them here, this is because he's going to have his red Q, so Faker respects it and just backs up. And the funny thing is, guys, in this laning phase, Elite 500 does not land one of his red Qs onto Faker during the entire lane. Now, after this little trade, guys, you can see that the minion wave is kind of even. So what is Faker going to do? Well, he's going to auto attack a couple of these melee minions just to guarantee he has the push. And I know this lane is so boring, right? It's 0, 0, 0. But by doing all of these things, Faker is accruing a bit of a CS lead and therefore a gold lead. And this will all amount to something eventually, which you are about to see. So Faker keeps playing like this, guys, until level 10 and the pressure he has as well. Like his tower plays are all still intact and this actually encourages Tarzan to play as the Rift Herald mid. And you can see in the bottom left, Faker has TP. Elite 500 actually had to use his TP to get back to mid lane because of the pressure Faker had on him. So Faker actually gets free roam at this point. This is why when he goes to the bot lane, Elite 500 cannot match his TP and he ends up picking up a kill and an assist. This is really what starts to snowball for Faker because he's already winning mid and picking up kills elsewhere. This is just icing on the cake. Now after these two kills, of course, he's going to shove the wave and then he's going to recall in a safe position so Cassiopeia can't stop his base. This is very important as well. Do not get your base interrupted. So try to base on your side of the map, whether it's in the brush or under your tower, whatever is safer. Now when Faker gets back to lane, guys, you can see that he's going to chunk Elite 500 here because he doesn't want Elite 500 holding up this wave. So he's going to W in, use his E and then his Q, or to attack Eprox, a ledge Q, nice bit of damage. But you have to understand, guys, if you look in the bottom left, Faker has not used his ultimate in this mid lane once. The reason for this is because he hasn't had an actual opportunity to kill the Vladimir, so the only other reason to use his ultimate is to escape a potential gank. So this means that for Talon, because Faker has his ultimate pretty much the whole time, it's almost impossible to gank him and actually make a play because he can get out so easily with his ultimate distortion. And once again, when this wave resets, you can see that Faker has the push advantage, and as soon as there is a fight happening in the bowling, lane, Faker gets first roam just because of this minion wave push he has. Elite 500 ends up getting to this fight, but he gets to it so much later than Faker, and this allows Faker to set up the kills he needs for his team and carry this team fight. So two assists and one more kill, very nice indeed, and again, he's going to back on his side of the map, and at this point, it is now about popping off, and you guys are going to love what you're going to see here, because some of these players are actually insane. Now, one little tip I'd like to see Faker do here is actually swap his trinket for a red sweeper. This will help him deny enemy vision and set up kills, but one player I really like what he does is when there is a fight happening at the enemy blue buff here, so in their jungle, he doesn't run through the mid lane, or in other words, in an area where the enemy team can see him. He's going to be running through fog this whole time through his raptors, and this means that for Cassiopeia, you can even tell she thinks she's just fighting the Heimerdinger here, and all of a sudden Faker shows up and he picks up a kill. This is really important to manipulate that vision and to stay in fog as long as possible. Now, after shoving the top wave and getting the top tower, Faker is going to eventually recall, and then he's going to get his blue buff and go to the mid lane, and this just shows you guys like how good these challenges are at fighting. So again, before Faker jumps in, he's going to wait in fog until there's a real opportune moment to jump in. And when he does, he's going to pick up the most killable enemy champion who's actually worth killing. This is Talon. So he's going to chain and queue the Talon and Jin ends up picking up the kill. Now, shortly after this, the Aurelia jumps onto Faker and tries to kill him, but there's no real worry because Aurelia is so low and he ends up killing her. And this is where LeBlanc is just so fun to watch and Faker as well. And the key guys to really playing your champion like this is to look in the bottom left and just to play around your cooldowns. This really determines how strong your champion is, so if you have cooldowns, you're strong. If you don't, you're not. So you're never going to see Faker jump in without his cooldowns ready. And this means that Faker can deal so much damage, set up kills for his team, and it's almost impossible to actually kill him just because of how optimally he's playing with his cooldowns. So he almost kills Cassiopeia here, and then he's going to recall and get back on the map. Now Jin ends up dying in this situation, so Faker tries to avenge his teammate, but unfortunately doesn't kill the Talon here. And you might be like, well, why didn't he just stay and auto-attack the Talon? on a way for his Q to come back up, for sure. But it's risky, because Pike is nearby, and maybe Talon's cooldowns will come back up. Look in the bottom left as well. Faker has no cooldowns, apart from his Q in like half a second, so it's actually safer for Faker just to wait for his W to come back up, and then he can jump back in. Now, I bet lots of you weren't expecting that. Faker goes back to his ultimate's distortion,
distortion position and ends up killing the Pike instead. So yes, Talon escaped for sure. We didn't get that kill, but it's a lot safer giving up a kill than it is risking your life. And what we're going to watch, guys, in the next couple of minutes is just absolute mechanic masterclass from Faker. And to be honest, I'm just going to let you watch because at this point, Faker uses all the tips we've talked about, using his cooldowns, dodging the Aurelia ultimate. How sick was that? And this TP from Faker in this play looks really red hot, right? Like it looks risky because he's TPing in between four enemy champions. But here's the thing, guys. What have we been talking about this whole time? Cooldowns, right? So in the bottom left, Faker has all his, obviously. But the enemy champions, you would have noticed near this Rengar, are missing HP. And this most likely means just because they're close to Rengar as well, they have used most of their cooldowns. Faker would know this as well before TPing, so it actually decreases the risk, even if he was to TP on top of these three enemy champions here, just because they don't have as many cooldowns. This means that they are a heck of a lot weaker, and you can just go for more risky plays. And what Faker does here is just beautiful, going back to his distortions, and using his cooldowns to bait and damage the enemy champions like this Cassiopeia, who he ends up killing. And the final clip I want to show you guys is in the enemy base, where Faker stays for like 5 minutes in this game, and just kills the enemy champions over and over again. But I want you to keep track as well, don't just watch this, look in the bottom left each time Faker goes in with his cooldowns. After this he's probably going to back up, because auto attack LeBlanc doesn't exactly work, and even when he's as low as he is right here, he's still going to go in, because he has all of his abilities right. Right? So remember guys, it doesn't actually matter the champion you're playing. Your cooldowns determine how strong your champion is, but it's also important to think about the enemy cooldowns as well. So Faker has to go up against a Pike ultimate, an Aurelia stun, a Cassiopeia ultimate. So each time he goes in on one of these champions, you can tell that he's actually thinking about these cooldowns as well, which is why he will go back to his W a lot of the time, just to minimize the chance of him actually dying to these important cooldowns the enemy team has. So if this video was useful to you guys, let me know in the comments down below, and also make sure to check out the Game Week website on your way out for all your League of Legends needs. Like season end, it's probably about a month away. So to make sure you achieve your rank goals this season, make sure you sign up. Links in the description and comment section. And as always, thanks for watching the video and I will see you in tomorrow's upload. Bye.